What's up, Hacker Valley fam? RSA is right around the corner and we are so excited because it's one of our big opportunities to meet with you, our dedicated listener. If you want to catch up with myself, Chris, or anyone on the Hacker Valley team, be sure to jump in our Discord. You can join by going to hackervalley.com forward slash Discord. To add on top of the excitement for RSA, this week, we're going to be sharing a never-before-seen episode that has only aired live at RSA last year. It's a conversation with Amy Bream, a Nike adaptive athlete, and Simone Biles. Yes, Simone Biles, the most decorated gymnast of all time. We hope you enjoy this episode, so let's jump right into it. Who says tech can't be human? Welcome back to the show. <laughs> Glad to be back again. Joined with two incredible guests, people that I'm starting to call my friends. Right. Yes. Uh, we got Simone Biles, Olympic gold medalist, <laughs> and also Amy Bream, adaptive athlete, CrossFit, kickboxer, everything. <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Fantastic. It's always good to chat with you guys. Uh, it's been incredible having this journey so far with you all. And everyone pretty much knows who you are at this point, right? You've been on the podcast. People see you guys on social media. But what I'd love for you to share with everybody today is what is most exciting for you right now? Like, what are you doing in your lives and your careers that has you the most excited? Let's start with you, Amy. Well, right now, I actually just finished up uh, a semifinal competition. So, uh, you know, all went well with that. So next for me is going to the CrossFit Games for my second year in a row um, for uh, in August, the first first week of August. So Congrats. other, you know, coming alongside that, uh, I was uh, able to actually sign with Nike as a sponsored athlete this year. So it's been an exciting year. I'm just going to keep trucking along, just going in that direction, you know? Yeah, so. absolutely. And of course, Simone, a lot of life stuff going on, yes. right? A lot of business stuff going on. But yes. what has you the most excited right now? Right now, what has me the most excited is we're planning our wedding. Yeah. So we just solidified a location and a date. So now we can finally move on and try to find the photographers and the DJs and all of that stuff. So yeah. that's yeah. what's going on. So what does it feel like to be at a cybersecurity conference? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of shocked. I didn't know there were this many companies. I mean, obviously, we're here with Axonia, so it's super exciting. Yeah. You guys have the best booth here. Thank you. So we are loving this. Um, but I'm kind of shocked. I haven't been to an event like this in a really long time. So at least we're having some normalcy again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that is very true. It's exciting to see everyone together here. I know you guys are excited because I think it's been since like 2020 yes. um, since you were able to, to be right. here. So, yeah. yeah, this is all like very new to me. I mean, I'm new to this world in general, even to the world of athletics in the last couple of years. So I'm just along for the ride. We're having <laughs> fun, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so we got to talk about that, right? We're we're mm -hmm. just getting back to being in person after two years. It, it For a cybersecurity practitioner, it was tough because mm -hmm. we're working with technology all day. Mm -hmm. And the people that we're trying to connect with, it's all through Zoom. And, you know, that is very tough in its own right to build connections and relationships mm -hmm. just through a computer screen. And we've had to, like, really push through to become successful, whether it came from uh, cybersecurity attacks. I'm sure you all heard of the term ransomware, maybe. Yeah. yeah people stealing your information and data. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to ask, you know, from an athletic perspective, what do you all do to push through those tough challenges and persevere, especially when the world isn't the same? Let's start with you, Simone. Yeah, I think right now you have to persevere because obviously in life there will always be ups and downs. So to kind of persevere through that and make sure you have a good surrounding system um, with me, that would be my family supporting me. Yeah. Um, so just to make sure you do that. And that's what I do right now. Yeah, I would say um, similar to what Simone said, like having a good support system around you of people that uh, you can rely on for encouragement and accountability right. um, to just have you remember like why you started and like why you want to grow in the first place. Um, and then just staying really um, 
like true to the things that matter, even in like the small consistent things, because you know that even if it might not feel good today, maybe it'll feel good tomorrow or in a week or a couple of months. And just remembering the big picture rather than just this is how I feel in this moment right now. Right. It's, it's a journey. Sometimes it's going to be tough. Sometimes it's going to be easy, but you can't over index in either way. Mm -hmm. We would love to hog all the time and ask all the questions, <laughs> but we have some of our friends in cybersecurity that wanted to speak to you two. So we're going to jump right to the first question. Okay. Hi, Amy. You've confirmed over and over again that consistency wins, that once you've mastered consistency, you're ready for any curveballs that life throws at you. This can be true for us in cybersecurity, in marketing, or even for anyone in their career growth. But it's so hard to feel that energy on a daily basis and stay consistent. How do you encourage your body and mind to uh, follow through with this mantra of consistency? Other than daily affirmations in front of your mirror. Yes, we did a little bit of digging. So, yeah. So thank you for that question. It was just about how do I stay consistent with the small things and, and what I do to, you know, keep going. Um, and I think it, kind of like we mentioned a few moments ago of like surrounding yourself with people that help hold you accountable to those small things and and remembering um, you know, not to keep repeating myself, but you know, why I started, like, it's not about a workout for me. It's not about a physique or anything like that. It's, it's about truly starting to believe that I can do really hard things. Um, and I, I heard a quote once that was, it's, it's not that the more that you do, it's the less afraid you are. It's that be you become more brave. And so I think um, if I want to do like keep doing these really great opportunities and big things, it's not that I'm um, going to be wake up tomorrow and feel completely ready to do it. It's like, well, I can handle this moment, you know, in the next five minutes and stay consistent with those small things um, and eventually get to the point where I feel brave enough to do those big goals. So small things first, big yes. things come. <laughs> Incremental wins. Mm -hmm. We have another question. The next question is from Rafael Nunez. So let's go ahead and jump right into that one. Hello, ladies. Rafael Nunez here, security architect. In both of your interviews with Ron and Chris, there was a common theme, believing in yourself. In our cybersecurity industry, fast changing landscape, imposter syndrome seems to plague a lot of security practitioners and professionals. What is your advice for overcoming and dealing with imposter syndrome? So how do you find, you know, the ability to not be an imposter? I feel like we yeah. oftentimes, especially in cybersecurity, working in technology, we find ourselves being an imposter, feeling like an imposter, but that's not really the case. So how would you answer Raphael's question? Yeah, for me, I definitely would say fake it till you make it. And I think it's something that we've both used throughout our careers and it's worked for us. And once you start believing in that, that's when you start succeeding. But I also believe since I've been on like a global scene since I was 14 years old, imposter syndrome wasn't so prevalent as it is now. So I think nowadays the kids have a really hard time trying to stay authentic to themselves. So really just believe in yourself, faking it till you make it and it'll be good. Yeah. And in addition to what Simone said, like we all feel imposter syndrome, I think at some point. So I think on some, on some level, when you realize we're all feeling that way and it, the difference is, well, are you going to like stay frozen in fear? Or are you just going to move forward and continue to learn? Um, like then you don't need to worry about it. As long as I've always taken the opinion, as long as I'm not trying to pretend like I'm someone I'm not, and pretending to know things that I don't know, then I have nothing to be afraid of. So I don't have to feel like an imposter if I'm just genuinely learning and figuring it out and not shutting down. Yeah, I would just say everyone feels like they don't know what they're doing at some point. Right. So like someone said, fake it till you make it and just <laughs> be true to who you are. Keep going. 100%. Well, when I talk to both of you, that's what really resonated with me the most because you talked about the world championship, right? You were like, oh, wow, there's all these incredible people here, but yeah. you did it. You like yeah. came out on top, right? And you got yeah. a special uh, gift because of that. Yeah. And then even with you going into the gym the first time, mm -hmm. being able to step in there, like you felt like you're like, why am I even here? And then even going a step further and going into kickboxing, you're like, what is the heck is going on, right? And then now CrossFit. So all of this combined, you really think about 
the human spirit. You really think about how do you persevere and do the most. But sometimes in cybersecurity, even I feel like we're mental athletes with no off season. A lot of folks are doing work day in and day out. They're responding to threats and they're responding to incidents where people are literally trying to hack them and take money, data and the like. And sometimes you can feel run down because you're just pushing the envelope every single yeah. day. How do you both handle that life complexity of being in the thick of it all the time without feeling burnt out? Uh, let's start with you, Amy. Um, I would say it is obviously very tempting to feel burnout. And I find most often that if I feel that way, it's because I'm looking at the overwhelming big picture rather than focusing on what's in front of me. And so for me, it's all been about um, being consistent with, you know, if I practice these things over and over, then when I have to do it in front of you know, a couple thousand people, then I'll understand that like, well, I've done this before, so I can do this now. Um, and just staying like really particular with what I have to do in the moment rather than letting, you know, the overall big picture exhaust me. Um, so I think that's one of the yeah. biggest things that I do. <laughs> Simone? Yes. <laughs> so for me, I think I have a little bit of a different approach just because Amy, I mean, she's been doing it for like a year now. So it's new, but I feel like if I could give you some advice or something that has helped me, um, it's find your passion outside of your sport mm -hmm. so that you don't feel like you're going to be burnt out and you still have a life outside of your sport, something that fuels your tank outside of it. So that once you go into the gym, you're fueled same as outside. I think that's same for cybersecurity practitioners. Like we, yeah. we have to often find the passion outside of our work just because if you just focus on your work all day, you're going to get burnt out, especially yeah. over the course of many, many years. We have another question. The next question is from Ashish Rajan. So let's go ahead and jump into that question. Hi there. My name is Ashish. I'm from Cloud Security Podcast. And this is Simba, who's our head of physical security. I had a question for both of you. Now, people who are performing at their peak level and sometimes have events which are four years down the track, like the Olympics, and you're, today is just day one, what are some of the rituals or practices that you have adopted to maintain your focus on the prize, even though it may be four years down the track? The context for this is in our cloud security conversation or cyber security conversation, there are projects that take a long time. And sometimes some of these projects may have end up being really successful and you get a lot of, I guess, fame for it. But how do you maintain that eye on the price on an ongoing basis? Are there any rituals that you have developed that we can probably learn from? Thank you. So do you want me to go first? Doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> so for what has helped me maintain or stay on track, because you have for us every four years is the Olympics. So it's long term. So what my mom has kind of made me and my siblings do is at the beginning of every year, we kind of go in, write down our goals, which consist of short term and long term so that we have that visual of what we're trying to accomplish so that those goals don't seem that far fetched. So once you think of the big picture, it's like, hold on, we have X, Y, Z until we get there. Let's focus on the small ones, small wins, and then get to the bigger picture. Yeah. And one thing that I do, um, sometimes like we forget how much progress that we make in a couple of weeks or a couple of years. So for me, um, like even in my training, I'll film things, even if I feel like I'm having a bad day and then, uh, I'll do that consistently and then go back and watch. And it's so encouraging to see progress that I've missed in a couple of weeks. So even like journaling or, you know, maybe you're not working out, but just like, yeah reminding yourself how far that you come, even when you don't recognize it. And for me too, it's so important to, to make those goals and also to fall in love with the journey of it as cliche as that sounds. Uh, because, uh, you know, I don't know if you feel this way, but like winning is awesome, but it's an adrenaline and it yeah. like it hits you for a couple of seconds. And yeah. if it's been a miserable year leading up to that or four years leading up to it, you're like, well, that wasn't quite worth everything that I just went through. Yeah. Um, as, as much as you love that, um, if you don't love the process of getting there right. um, and of like becoming better, then the winning isn't going to cut it. And so for me, it's just remembering like falling in love with like who I am becoming in the process of it all. 100%. When, when you think about progress, sometimes we forget because we're in the thick of it. And like you were saying, whether you see pictures of yourself from like way back when or 
video or even sometimes like for the podcast, like I, sometimes I go back to episode one and I'm like, what was I doing? I, I sound <laughs> terrible. Oh, goodness. But then you say, you know what? The bad days are worth it because that's really where all that growth starts to happen. So with that, let's jump in to our next question. Okay. Hi, Simone. In cybersecurity, there's a great deal of pressure to conform and fit into a pre-existing mold. But so many of us either cannot fit into that mold or don't want to at all. And we know you've had this kind of pressure in your career. What was it that kept your determination going and to remain true to who you are and make your own mold? So how do you stay true to who you are? I'm sure there are a lot of folks out there, a lot of companies that are like, hey, why don't you be like this for us? Or why don't you be that way? So how do you like keep all that at bay and mm -hmm. continue to be true to who you are? Yeah, it's staying authentic to yourself and to your brand, but also in the world of gymnastics, kind of me pushing the barriers, getting skills named after me. All I wanted was to be great. And then once I got to that point, I was like, how much further can I push the boundaries? What else am I capable of? So I think there comes a time in people's careers where you just think you've reached the peak. And every time I've thought I've reached the peak, I've dug deeper inside and I'm like, how much more do I have to give? What else can I accomplish? So I set more goals for myself and bigger goals just to see what I'm capable of and how much I can achieve. And I think that's why I've achieved so much is because once I was at the top, I was like, how much further can I get? How much further can I get? So I just never stopped because I always wanted to head out of the sport thinking I gave it my all in that's I maxed out. And so that's why I do it. Love it. So you you two are the stars behind our controlling complexity <laughs> campaign. Hopefully you've seen your face on buses yeah. and all over the Internet and commercials. And you all are the stars. And when we first you know reached out to both of you, it might have been a little confusing. What is this cybersecurity company doing reaching out to me and yeah. how are we going to work together? But it's been a bit now that we've been working together. So how has the relationship with Exonius evolved over the past few months? Well, I've loved it. We And we've actually like both said today yeah. um, something like for both of us is we want to have partnerships that are like true and make sense and not just doing it to do it. So I know like when Exonius first reached out, I had that question. I was like, <laughs> no offense, y'all, but like what? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I don't know I work if this out. makes sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but then when they explains like their entire campaign of controlling the small things and, and right. being able to manage um, what you can manage and control helps you handle the big picture. Because like the word cybersecurity in general for the majority of the population of the world we're like right it's overwhelming like what like how do i but now we're, we live in a day and age where you can't just ignore cybersecurity like you need it um right. and so like how do we enter that world how, how do we attack it and then I, I completely resonated with that message of like i wouldn't be able to go out and compete in any competition let alone the crossfit games if i wasn't practicing every single day and if i wasn't having my small routine if i wasn't managing what i can manage even coming down to like getting your breathing under control yeah. when you're nervous like those small things really really do matter um and so when i saw that like parallel between you know it's Controlling what you can control, controlling yeah, complexity. Yeah. I see what y'all did yeah, there. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Right. Since here we are. <laughs> I feel like I resonate with a lot of what Amy said because in the beginning you're like, hold on, and then it took a different spin on it. And then you see what you guys both have in common and how you can kind of push that barrier and kind of put that word out. I'm like, this actually makes all the sense now that I see it and we're doing this stuff. And so that's what made me interested in it. And it was so different because I mean, I don't know about you, but I've been hacked before and it is oh. not fun. It's oh. not fun at all. Yeah. But once you can control what you can control, I was like, I like it makes sense. The parallels are there. And now people ask me about it and I tell them, why I've partnered with Axonius yeah. and why we're doing and because it doesn't make sense to them at all at first. Yeah. And then I explain it to them and they're like, wait, that's actually a really neat spin. Like, I like how you guys did that. I'm like, it was smart. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. That, no one likes getting hacked is never a good scenario, but you're not by yourself. There's a right. lot of people, a lot of organizations out there. that are fighting this battle every single day with that. Let's jump to the next question. Hey, it's Dave Bittner from the Cyberwire. 
Um, you know, people in cybersecurity often find themselves in highly stressful, emotionally intense situations where there's a whole lot at stake, and they may have only one chance to get it right. You've faced these kinds of situations yourself when you're about to get up on that balance beam or run toward that vault. What sorts of things do you do to put yourself in the best state of mind so you can do what needs to be done and not be overwhelmed or distracted by everything that's at stake? Thanks. So with that, how do you stay focused in that those high intense situations where you have to perform different mediums, right? Whether you're talking about gymnastics, you're talking about boxing or CrossFit. How do you get really focused on the now and perform at your best? Let's start with you, Simone. Well, for us, a lot of what we do is repetition and it involves consistency. And that's what a lot of what you guys do, too. So once we go up and she's either going to do lift weights or I'm about to do a routine on the beam, it's like I've done this so many times. It goes it's autopilot at this point. So I think that's how you can think about it is like you guys have done this so many times, even if you guys are at a big convention or whatever you're doing. You've done it. It's autopilot. It's just the stress of what people are going to see see or think or the response that you're going to get. But other than that, you guys have done it a million times. You've trained for this. It's your profession. Right. Yeah. And I think not to use this phrase again and again, but controlling what you can control. So like yeah. that repetition is important because when you do go into autopilot or whatever, like it's, you know, that you can control, like even coming out of this last competition, I had the single sentence that helped me the most was my coach repeatedly telling me you are in control. I was like, wow, I am in control. Like I've done this before. Like I, like I know what my body can do and I can make it do it now. Like I've made it do it a hundred times, whether I'm by myself or whether I have an audience watching me um, and just focusing on, you know, breathing, like controlling yeah. it and, and just knowing like I have nothing to be afraid of right now yeah. because I, I know what I'm doing and I've managed what I needed to. And now we're just going to, we're going to have fun now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the breathing idea. I mean, that's mm -hmm. so important. That's what we need the most. Sometimes we think about needing more water. That's always helpful, but just taking that breath and that pause mm -hmm. and re, re acclimating and realigning yourself is, is always going to be helpful. And I think that you two are actually like a really great partner for Axonius. You know, you talked about Axonius making sense, but I think it makes a lot of sense to have you two, especially Simone, you know, your time in gymnastics and moves being named after you. Yeah. What we we're hoping to do was humanize cybersecurity, show that there's people behind technology. A lot of times we get caught up in the bits and the bytes, but at the end of the day, there's someone sitting behind the keyboard. So uh, Simone, for you, when you were looking at Axonius and the partnership. I'm sure sometimes people like forget just to refer to you as Simone, the person, yeah, um, the human Simone. So how do you get people to acknowledge you as the person, like rather than just the gymnastics, the person that has won many gold medals? I think having that correlation, even with social media, has helped so much to kind of humanize us. And during COVID whenever everybody was at home um, or working from home, we got to put our viewpoints on how we felt about certain situations. So they got to see the inside athletics of the athlete. And most of the time people are like, oh my gosh, shut up, you're just an athlete. And then you're like, actually, I have an opinion on this because I can vote, I can do X, Y, Z. So I think having something they can relate to you on a different level really makes it personal for them. And that's how I've tried to let my audience know that I am a human because most of the time they can't relate to the gold medals. They can't relate to traveling and competing for Team USA. They can't relate to this, but they can relate to maybe being adopted or X, Y, Z. So that's how I've tried to do it and just be an advocate and be a voice for the voiceless. So I was an athlete in high school. You know, I'm, I, I'm, you know, I was some, somebody, you know, <laughs> back in the day, but, uh, when you're an athlete, sometimes spectators don't really understand the world of an athlete. Mm -hmm. They don't really understand what goes into our life. We talk about empathy all the time. What is something that you wish you could convey to the spectators of a sport that have no idea what it is to be an athlete? Let's start with you, Amy. I think it is incredibly transferable what we do in athletics versus really anything else. Um, 
what what is, has attracted me to like athletics is that there's this, this mind body connection where you like think something and then you physically do it. And so it's right. like tangible. It's, it's very easy to understand in that regard. Um, but you can take any like I got confidence by saying positive affirmations to myself every day. You don't have to be an athlete to do that. Right. It's it's repetition is not something that's specific to athletics. That's, you know, if you want to be good at your job or at a hobby, like maybe you're doing pottery, like you need yeah. to practice, you know, it's the same principles no matter what you're doing. Yeah. And so I think that whenever people, it's funny because I, I am new to this, like even gaining any kind of platform only happened for me in the last year. And I remember coming back from the games, um, I had posted a video and it was going viral and it all happened very quickly and unexpectedly for me. And um, I remember telling my coach, we were driving home from the games and I said, my biggest fear in this is that someone is going to look at my profile and think that I'm unrelatable because they think there's such a separation yeah. between what I do and what they do. And I'm like, no, it's not. Like you have goals. It, it, they don't have to be the same as mine, but you can accomplish them through the same habits and practices. There's no difference between you and I in that regard. It's just yeah. waking up and choosing to do it. So what about you? No, I think the same thing. I think trying to show people that we're human because most of the time what they watch and they see us doing isn't normal, isn't right. human, or maybe they might not be able to do it. But if they can see our platforms and see what we believe in and what we stand for and the partners that we have, then they can see a correlation and be like, you know what? I really believe in that. And that's why I think she's human X, Y, Z. And for the first time, uh, 2021, I didn't think people saw me for Simone or as human until I stepped away from those competitions. And then people were like, wow, she is human because for so many years they couldn't relate to what I was doing because right. it was not normal in a way, you know? Yeah. With that, let's go to the next and final question. Hello, ladies. I'm Anne-Marie Zettelmeyer or AMZ in some circles. As you know, security is a multidisciplinary craft. It takes a wide range of skill sets, tools, and minds in order to build a strong security program that actually works. It's never one technique. It's never one discipline. We also have to cross train in order to defend. And as a chief security officer, I have to enable my teams to not only master the fundamentals, but to also seek out innovation, to seek out change, to have that mindset to constantly learn about new techniques and new capabilities, new threats in order to stay ahead of the adversary. Basically, they have to be at the top of their game because the stakes are high for us too. I know that both of you can relate to that in more ways than one. How important is innovation and cross-training to your craft? How do you push the boundaries to find a better way to perform while still holding on to the fundamentals that made you great? When I was doing something like jujitsu, uh, going in, mm -hmm. learning the basics, you want to start doing the fun stuff like immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the same for you, right? You want to start doing the fun stuff immediately, but it's all about really focusing on the fundamentals. But at a certain point, you have to start to grow into yourself and push the boundaries a little bit. How do you push into the boundaries while also keeping a, a close tie on the fundamentals? Let's start with you, Simone. I think for me and what my coaches have always done is we've always gone back to the basics. If we're having an issue or you just need that daily reminder because you get so caught up in moving on and learning all the new things that you might forget the basics and the fundamentals. So we always try to go back and reiterate that so that it sets you up for perfection or for greatness or to just spring forward. And that's what we've done in our sport. And I think that's what sometimes we need to just do in life is to go back to the basics. If we're stressed, if we're trying to accomplish something new, um, if we're tired, feeling burnt out, go back to the basics and remember why you're doing it and what your joy was. Yeah. I really like the last sentence you said, find your, yeah. what your joy was, because there is something so special about like when you first learn something, even if it's like doing a push up, you're like, right. okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, at, like no matter how simple it is. And I think um, there's there's joy in the basics. Like we can look at it and see it as mundane or, you know, not fun or whatever, but really um, those things are what allow us to do other cool things. If we don't have that, we can't move forward if we don't have a good foundation. And so uh, for me, it's, 
often the same. My coach always says, like, find your win every day, no matter what. So if I'm wanting to push the boundaries, but I'm not able to, then we we go back and we go to the basics and and quote unquote, find my win for the day. Yeah. Um, and that I think is motivating to come in on the days that we do feel great because you do have days where you're like, yeah, I've done the basics and now like, let's see what else we can yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. um, I think we can both, you know, relate to that, just of that competitive feeling with ourselves more than anyone else of like, right. I mean, you said earlier, um, you know, you reached a point that you thought was your peak and then you're like, well, let's keep going. Right. Um, and so I think it's a continual growth, no matter what you're doing, um, right. of just like never putting a cap or a ceiling on what um, you think that you can do. But remembering you get there by sticking to the basics and doing what you know and staying really solid and grounded in that as yeah. you continue to grow. That's where mastery really begins is understanding and mastering like the foundation of whatever it is that you're trying to do. You know, it's really been an honor to talk to both of you several times, your inspirations to us. And honestly, you've transcended your sports. You've transcended that place that you occupy because you're doing so much more. You're doing more for people outside of your sport. You're doing so much for people all around the world. When you think about something like legacy, right? We talk about legacy all the time on the podcast. And some people look at it as like an egotistical way, but legacy is really about impacting other yeah. people. When when all is said and done, what do you think about legacy and what it means to you and the things that you have to do yet? Let's start with you, Amy. Mm. <laughs> it's a loaded question. <laughs> well, let's just jump right in. Right. Yeah. Um, no, I think for me, um, I don't really expect anything, anyone to remember what I necessarily like physically do. Right. Um, and just logistically speaking, like adaptive athletes, like adaptive athletics in general is pretty new to, for it to even be publicized for it to be in competitions. So CrossFit having an adaptive division, not everyone's going to like spit out all the statistics or the moves that I do. So it's not really right. about that. It's not even really about working out. For me, it's about the fact that you know, when I was 13, 14, I didn't turn on the TV and find anything adaptive. It wasn't even a thing. I didn't know that I like there were adaptive sports, period. And so if I want to talk about like a legacy and adaptive, like whatever I do, whether people are adaptive or not, I want people to take me seeing my journey and apply that to their own lives and be like, I want to do that either literally like you know, an adaptive 13 year old girl saying, I want to get into CrossFit or whatever, or, or push boundaries, or just like believing in themselves. Like I didn't used to have confidence at all. Like I had no self confidence. Yeah. I have a very different person than I was even in high school. Um, and so I guess I want people to remember, quote unquote, my legacy is like, I can do it too. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's go, you know, like, what am I going to do tomorrow to like, get better? And so, yeah, love it. Let's go. What I also think what Amy says is, or she might not say is a part of her legacy is going to the gym at 29, now 30 years old. And she's created her legacy at this age. So it doesn't have to start. Mine started at six years old and trying to create that your dream doesn't have to come true or you don't have to hit your peak in life at a certain age. I thought that was going to be 19 for me, but she showed me that you can keep going and <laughs> you can do going. it all and you can find your passion later in life and look at what she's achieved. So that's inspired me. But for me and my legacy, I think it would be really neat to kind of transcend the sport. But not only that is shine a different light on it because for the past couple of years, it's been a little bit dim. So to just be a voice for the voiceless and do more outside of the gym, as much as I've done in the gym and to kind of create change in that way. Um, so hopefully it transitions to my outside life and I can make an impact in that way that I have in the gym. Love it. Absolutely. It's always an honor to chop it up with you too. <laughs> Fantastic as always. For the folks out there that are watching this, thousands of cybersecurity practitioners, and now they're like, oh, we got to stay in touch yeah. with these two here. What are the best <laughs> ways for people to do that? Let's start with you, Simone. For me, I meant obviously I'm on basically every platform, yeah. Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, but probably the easiest way to get in contact with me would be my agent. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's amazing. <laughs> she's super. Um, she's my right hand, my go to, right. and she'll probably respond quicker than I do. I'm <laughs> not sure she sleeps at night, but I really hope she does. <laughs> 
<laughs> Same. I'm terrible at communication. My my agent is also yeah. my help for sure. Uh, I uh, Instagram is a is a big platform. TikTok, you know, all those good yeah. things. Yeah. I uh, any kind of partnerships or things that I'm looking forward to. I also post on a, my website amybream.com or my Instagram handle one leg to stand on. Right. Ah, I'm only saying it is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make it up. Uh, so anyway, but yeah, uh, all the platforms, uh, social media is, yeah. is mainly where we're at. Beautiful. Well, I'm sure a lot of people watching are already following you too. But if yeah. not, definitely check them out. Yes. Simone, Amy, it was such a pleasure. Thanks as always. Thank, Thank you. So you. With that, we'll see you in the next episode. Yes.